Welcome. It's so good to be back together again. Thank God for his precious Holy Spirit and the privilege of us getting to be in his presence. Let's welcome him right now. Precious Holy Spirit, we never want to take for granted the privilege we have of access to your presence. Welcome. Help us. Teach us. Download Heavenly Father's will into our lives right here. His will being done here on earth as his will is done in heaven. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And we're kicking off our new series Back to the basics, Wisdomology 101. I love wisdom. I love wisdom. You know, the Bible even says to say to us in Proverbs, it says, say to wisdom, you are my sister in understanding. You are my close kinswoman or cousin. So I'm always saying to wisdom, Pam's heard me many times go through the house. Wisdom, you're my sister and understanding you're my close cousin. So thank God for his word downloading these principles into our heart. Today, in this part one, I want to focus on the principal thing. The principal thing. Wisdomology 101, the principal thing. You know, talking about wisdom, kids can amaze us with their wise responses, can't they? There was this little girl, Jennifer, and one day her teacher was asking her, she said, Jennifer, finish this statement. If the shoe fits, Jennifer thought for a minute and then she went, hmm, if the shoe fits, buy it in every color. Her mom would be really proud, wouldn't she? <laughs> Five-year-old Daniel, he was asked, Daniel, what should a man take with him if he needed to stay alive for many days in the woods? Daniel thought for a second. What would a man take with him if he had to live for many days in the woods? He said, he should take his wife with him. You know what? Wise young man. Wise young man. So what in the world is wisdom? Is it book smarts? Is it investment smarts? How about IQ? Does wisdom come from an elite education or does it come from much worldly experience? How about this? Are scientists and professors, are they wise? Does having a huge vocabulary constitute as wisdom? If you invented Facebook or Tesla, does that make you the wise person in the room? If one died on a cross for all of humanity and yet many of those same people refused to accept him as their savior, is that wisdom? Because listen, many businesses would say that the price to earnings ratio is unacceptable. It's not profitable and therefore it's not wise. But thank God, God so loved the world. He so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son. God loved us. I love wisdom. It has profoundly revolutionized my life. I've been guilty of great foolishness in my life, but God's wisdom has rescued me time and again. It's corrected me, helped me, transformed me. It has grown me. My marriage to Pam is all because of God's gracious wisdom. My friend, wisdom is a master key. I've had undeserved successes in my life because of God's wisdom. It's a golden key. I've been healed of various sicknesses in my life, all because of God's wisdom. I live debt-free because of God's wisdom. I sleep peaceful and sound at night because of God's wisdom. I've been forgiven and I've been given the chance to forgive others because of God's wisdom. God's helped me to help others with His wisdom. God's taught me how to pray, how to worship, how to give, how to rest and how to live with His wisdom. No wonder I'm so excited to talk to you today about this journey into wisdom and into the exciting world of Wisdomology 101. It's truly a life-changing basic of life and living above the storm. I hear so many Christians talk about God's love or they talk about God's grace and that's powerful and it's wonderful. But listen to me, none of these powerful forces are a substitute for the principal thing, God's wisdom. Consider this, if you're going to go on a trip from point A to point B in your brand new car, and let's say you got a brand new top of the line Ferrari, okay, what would be the principal thing? Would it be the steering wheel? How about the engine? Oh, maybe it's the wheels that the engine turns. No, the principal thing would be the road. Without a road from point A to point B, you, you could have a quarter of a million car, dollar car sitting out in a field. You're still not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how fancy, how expensive the car is. You need the principal thing. And can you see it? There's a lot of people in life, they're sitting there stuck. 
They may have all kinds of expensive things around them, but they're not going anywhere because they've forsaken the principal thing. Did you know that Proverbs 3 verse 17 says this, that wisdom's way is a highway of pleasantness. Can I say that again? Wisdom's way is a highway of pleasantness. That's what you and I need, a highway. So what is the main thing in life? I mean, what is the principal thing? What is the road in life? Let's look at Proverbs 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. And then God says, he doesn't stop there. He says, get it, get wisdom. Therefore, if it's the road, if it's the highway of pleasantness, my friend, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, don't stop there. He says, get understanding, learn how to unfold wisdom so you know how to use it. Let me ask you, is your marriage falling apart? It's probably not a love problem. You've got a wisdom problem. Is your business failing? You don't have a money or a customer problem, my friend. You got a wisdom problem. Are you failing at school? It's not an academic or an intellectual problem. You've got a wisdom problem. If you're failing at sports, hockey, football, it's not an athletic problem. You guessed it. You've got a wisdom shortage. Wisdom is the principal thing. So as we go back to the basics, right? That's what this is all about. Going back to the basics, Wisdomology 101. Let's define wisdom for our Wisdomology class. Wisdom is not just a thing. It's not just some quotient, a measurement of inner discernment. No, 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 no. Listen to 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. It goes on in verse 30 and says, Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God. Can you see that? Jesus is the very personification of God's wisdom. Jesus is the word and therefore Jesus is wisdom. I like, you know, John 1 verse 1 and it says this, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. He's talking about Jesus. You see, all things were made by Jesus. It says all things were made by him, Jesus. And without Jesus was not anything made. So we can say it like this. All things were made by the word and without the word was not anything made that was made. Or we can say it like this. He, all things were made by wisdom and without wisdom was not anything made that was made. You see, God's word is God's wisdom. And therefore, the principal thing, the foundation, God's wisdom is the container of the manifestation, the absolute the originator, originator of all creation. So do we think we can replace true wisdom with intellect, knowledge, formulas, and truly be living? You know, I think that's part of the great con job in life. Subjective morality, worldly knowledge independent of the absolutes. It's a huge lie. It's a lie that resonates all the way from the Garden of Eden with our great-grandmother Eve. You see, wisdom guides our choices for life. Humanity has a track record of doing all kinds of crazy things without wisdom. So we have a track record of failure, brokenness, offense, hurt, divorce, disasters, war. Shall I go on? Without wisdom, I can guarantee you this. You will fail. Without wisdom, I can guarantee myself this. I will fail. And it will be miserable. I can guarantee you this. Without wisdom, you and I end up choosing failure, even death. So, all right, who's with me, right? What a terrible sales pitch. Who in the world wants to sign up for massive, extensive failure? Nobody. But yet we do it all the time. Every time we make a decision, a choice, independent of wisdom, we choose death. Every time we buy the lie that knowledge is independent of the absolute of truth, we lose, which is why it's imperative for you and I to understand there is no substitute, no substitute for wisdom. It's been said, there's a quote that says this, the gifts and talents of fools make them dangerous. It's not that gifts and talents are bad. They're great. They're a good thing. But, you know, the Bible even says that prosperity will ruin a fool. You have to have wisdom. When a created being begins to invent his own manual for life, 
That person has forsaken the truth. They've forsaken wisdom. They've become a fool. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge is intellectual. It's informational. And it's based on facts. There's a great quote. I love it. And it says this. Knowledge is knowing that the tomato is fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. Right? Wisdom is based in truth. It's not a preference. Wisdom is unchanging. It's immovable, absolute, that is eternal. Knowledge can change in a split second. It's based on experience, data, senses. Schools and higher learning, basically, they teach knowledge, the knowing of something, which is good. Science is the study of systemized knowledge. But it's not wisdom. It's knowledge. And that's why science is always evolving and always being updated. God's wisdom is never changing. It's always constant. It's absolute. Until 1875, even science didn't know where babies came from. Leonardo da Vinci did not know. Isaac Newton didn't know. But God knew you and me before we were even conceived in our mother. That's what Jeremiah 1.5 says. Talk about wisdom. Wisdom is in perfect alignment with truth, with a capital T, the straight edge of life, the invisible foundation that holds up the visible. That's what I regard wisdom as. It's the invisible foundation, the invisible grounding for everything that's manifested, all the visible. To make decisions for life, strength, joy, blessing, it requires wisdom as the highway. Wisdom is the highway of a pleasant life. So let's get some wisdom on how to handle life, how to work the principal thing. See, we can work it. Come on, let's get practical and let's do, let's see what we can do with wisdom. See, we want wisdom to help us handle our life, our marriage, our children, our career, our money, our health, on and on. So show me, Stephen, how do we do this? Well, let me give you something super simple. I like my tea. In fact, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of an Earl Grey man myself. I like Earl Grey tea, and oftentimes Pam will bless me. So I might call out and I, uh, and I might hear Pam. She might say, Stephen, would you like some tea? And my response is always, yes. And so for the next few minutes, I'll hear some stirring downstairs. And so then I'll just continue reading my Bible or whatever it is I'm doing. And then finally Pam arrives and she says, honey, here's your tea. Here's your Earl Grey tea. And I'm like, thank you, honey. My Earl Grey tea. There you go. And I have to say, did she give me what I want? Yes, I got my Earl Grey and it looks like it's steeped perfectly. Is it a blessing to me? No. Is it hot? I've got third degree burns now, right? I've got third degree burns. Every good thing, every blessing, every manifestation of a promise must be delivered with a foundation. See, a principle, a basis, a bottom, a floor, or some kind of grounding. Come on, now you've done this. You've gone into a cafe and you've said, I'll have a coffee. But it's always assumed that there's a container that comes with it. Something that's a principal thing that can hold the hot blessing, right? Everything needs to be held. Think of a tree. Even a tree, it needs to have ground. It needs to, a forest needs to have ground to grow in. So now I want to show you how this works. Pam, come here. Serve me some more tea, please. Okay, see, so independent of the principle, the cup, it burns really hot. It's really hot. It burns. I'm kind of kidding. It's not really hot. We, <laughs> we, we let it kind of die down. But I want you to get the point. With, I got the tea. I got what I want. But without the principle, without the cup, it burns. So now let's try it some, some other way. Pam, I would like to have some power, please. See, independent of the wisdom, the principle, power corrupts. Pam, I would like to have some wealth, some riches. Give me some money, girl. I want it. Oh, yeah. But see, independent of the wisdom, the money ruins me. I even get arrogant. I get proud. I think I'm a self-made man. Pam, how about this? Some basics in life. Pam, I would like some food, please. Ugh. 
But you see, independent of wisdom, the food actually begins to control me. I become a slave to my appetite. This is a very real thing, folks. There are people that live enslaved to their appetite. Their appetite isn't the problem. They need a container. They need the wisdom. Let's try one more. Here's a good one. This, is, this could be confusing. Pam, give me some freedom. Believe it or not, I just got burned by freedom. You know why? Because independent of wisdom, it brings me back into um, bondage. That's what Paul wrote to the Galatians. He said, guys, freedom is a good thing if you know what it's for. See, we all want to get freedom from. We have a society right now where we have a bunch of people that want to be free from, but they don't know what they're free for. And so they go from one ditch to another ditch without the road of, if you don't have the highway, honey, all you got is ditches. You're just going from one ditch to another ditch and you're saying, I need my freedom. But freedom can become bondage if you don't know what it's for. Who's going to teach you what it's for but wisdom? You and I need wisdom. Pam, one more. Here's a big one. I'd like to have some intimacy. And for the kids in the back row, you know what I'm talking about. That's, there's some sex, right? Independent of true marriage, it destroys it leaves me broken. Do you understand that? You know, here's one of the big problems about sin is that a lot of times we don't feel the burn when the tea comes out. We don't understand. You know, that's a big thing in life. There's a disease that you can't feel pain. And people who can't feel pain, they usually die in their early 20s. Being able to feel the pain, the consequences immediately helps you take your hand away from the hot stuff. Take your hand away from the hot burner. The problem is us living in this sinful culture, we've a lot of us have left and lost our pain receptors. So a lot of times when the tea's coming out, we think we're experiencing pleasure when we're actually getting burned and we're actually experiencing pain consequences. Pam, I'd like to have some elite education, please. Give me some higher education. Oh, good stuff. But independent of the truth, we become Gnostics, denying the existence of sin and deifying humanism. In other words, we get crazy. We become nut jobs with our intellect. That's not a good cup of tea, my friend. You cannot substitute wisdom. You cannot substitute exercise for wisdom. You can't substitute wealth for wisdom. You can't substitute hard work for wisdom. You know, I, I admire people that have put their back into it and they work hard. You know, there are people that work hard and get nowhere in life. You can't substitute knowledge and education for wisdom. Knowing Jesus as Savior is not even a substitute for knowing Jesus as the wisdom of God. Bear with me here. Here's what I'm saying. In other words, being converted is not the same thing as being discipled, right? Discipleship. Let me just grab my cup here. Discipleship. Oh, it even has blessed on it. Isn't that precious? Discipleship teaches wisdom, boundaries, the ability to contain, manage, to hold on to the handle and receive the blessing. Pam, can I have some tea? Yes, you can. Oh, look at that. Look. Look at me managing the blessing like that, holding on to it. You see, we have too many Christians living off of an experience and not abiding in Christ. Let his word, his wisdom live with you and live in you. That requires the application according to John 15 and 11. What did Jesus say in John 15 and 11? He said, I've told you these things. Well, if Jesus is talking, what's coming out of his mouth? The word of God, yes, but the wisdom of God. He says, I've told you these things so that my joy and my delight may be in you and that your joy may be full. You see, right now my joy is full. I got me a full cup of Earl Grey tea and it's not burning me. I can manage it. I can control it. I can kind of sip away on it. I can see all things in moderation. I can sip. I don't want to have a bath in it. I just want to sip away at it moderately and it becomes a blessing. God wants you filled up to the full, my friend, with the good stuff. But how can he fill you to the full if you don't have a cup? Wisdom holds the manifestation of what you're hoping for, what you're believing for, even what you're praying for. Here's what I'm saying is prayer is not a substitute for wisdom.
You get wisdom, the principal thing, and your whole prayer life will transform and change. There's so many people that have been praying for the same thing for 30 years. Their problem is not that their faith is low. Their problem is not that God doesn't love them and care about answering them. Their problem is they keep asking for the cup of tea and they never have the cup. They never have the vessel, the wisdom to maintain and hold the hot blessing that God's delighting to pour into their life. God can give you the car, but if you run out of highway, your blessing becomes a tragedy. Isn't that so? If you're driving 60 miles an hour down the highway or 100, miles, 100 kilometers an hour down the highway and you run out of road, that's a tragedy, isn't it? Look at children of Israel in the promised land. They lost their wisdom and in doing so, they lost their freedom and lost their lives. How many parents have lost the blessing of their children because they forgot the wisdom is the principal thing. They love their kids, but they forgot the principal thing. Even love needs a container. Love is not a substitute for wisdom. Yes, love is the greatest, but wisdom is the principal thing. Never forget that. Prayer is not a substitute for wisdom. So God's wisdomology is for you. God gives wisdom to those who ask. Look at Proverbs 8, 35 to 36. For whoever finds me, wisdom, finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from the Lord. Verse 36, but he who misses me or sins against me, wrongs and injures himself. All who hate me, says wisdom, love and court death. Of course you don't want to be dating death. You don't want to burn your hand on the blessing. Oh, Pastor Stephen, is that even possible? Of course it is. Riches without wisdom destroy fools. Look again at the power of wisdom being the principal thing, the basic roadway to life. Proverbs 4, and this time I want to read verse 8 too. Wisdom is the principal thing, verse 7. Therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Then verse 8, exalt wisdom and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace wisdom. So my friend, where's your life going right now? Are you on the highway or do you feel like you got stuck in a ditch? Do you let the negative voices condemn you? Don't do that anymore. God doesn't bring condemnation, but he wants to bring you life. He's leading you and me on a road of repentance. That just means we've been going the wrong way. He's going to help us turn and go the right way. The enemy is afraid of you getting God's wisdom. If you start promoting wisdom, then wisdom's going to promote you and your enemy doesn't want that to happen to you. The devil wants you failing. Maybe you feel like every time something good is poured out, you're missing it. Wisdom is the answer for you. Are you struggling with anger, rage, maybe immorality? Have you been getting burned over and over and over and over? Maybe you're waiting and hoping that life will just change. Maybe, maybe you'll get lucky, you think, and, and just that'll change everything. No, no, no. That's a lie. Don't believe that lie. You need to go for the principal thing. God said, get wisdom, God's wisdom. You and I, we both need Jesus now, right now. If you want to choose the principal thing, establish your whole life on God's amazing principle, his highway of life, his highway of pleasantness. You heard him say it. That's not my words. That's God's word. Highway of pleasantness. Receive Jesus. Pray this right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your wisdom in my life. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me, rose up from the grave. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Direct my steps from here on. In your name, Jesus. Amen.